Welcome. My name is Peter Strong. I'm a professional psychotherapist based in Colorado and I teach mindfulness therapy online through Skype for the management of stress, uh, for working with anxiety and depression and also for help with recovery from addictions. So when we're working with stress we need to understand that stress is produced by our subjective reactions. Stress does not exist externally. This is the fundamental error that we tend to make, that we think that we are stressed because, and then we fill in uh, the particular reasons, such as I am stressed because I have too much work to do. I am stressed because I'm not making enough money to pay the bills. I am stressed because of my uh, health. I'm stressed because my children are not doing well at school. And so it goes on. We believe that those causes are the reason why we experience stress. But the fact is that those external factors are not the cause of our stress. They are triggers. This is the term that we use in mindfulness therapy and mindfulness training. We understand there are triggers that trigger habitual conditioned reactions. Those are the subjective reactions that create the suffering. So the trigger triggers those habitual reactions. If we change the habitual reactions, then those triggers will not create stress. They won't create that emotional uh, anguish and fear that is associated with stress. So, in the approach that I teach, mindfulness therapy for the management of stress, we first of all look for all these triggers. We make a list of them, all of the reasons why we think we are suffering stress. And but then we start to change these blind uh, underlying habits, the subjective habits that are the actual cause of the stress. So we do this by learning how to meditate on those uh, stressful triggers. So we meditate mindfully, bringing those stress triggers into the mind but seeing them with complete conscious awareness, with mindfulness. We watch for the emotional reaction to those triggers that creates the feeling of irritation or anger or fear. When we see that emotional reaction, we learn to turn it into an object. This is developing what we call objective consciousness. We see the emotion as an object instead of what we usually do, which is to become completely identified with that emotional reaction. I am stressed because when we see the emotion as an object, we break that linkage between the trigger and the emotional reaction. And then we start to work with the emotional reaction, whether it's anger, irritation or fear, and we help it heal by developing a compassionate relationship with that emotion. Part of what helps it heal is actually 
not to feed it by becoming identified with it. Because then what happens is that that reaction, that emotional reaction, then triggers more thought reactions. And those thought reactions reinforce the underlying stress, the emotional reaction of stress. So, typically, stress is produced by this runaway proliferation of habitual reactive thoughts. And that all happens unconsciously without us really being involved at a conscious level. We have no choice. It's conditioned. It's a habit. Stress is fundamentally a habit. It's a reactive habit. It's not caused by those external factors. So we, the best way to overcome any habit is to make it conscious. And that is the focus of mindfulness therapy and mindfulness meditation therapy, where we learn to meditate on the stress, to see those reactions, and to break free from the blind, habitual uh, nature of those reactions. We see them as objects. When you see the reaction as an object, you don't. You now have choice. You don't have to react and suffer. You can actually start to interact with that object in a way that helps it heal. And one of the uh, primary methods that we use in in healing the stress reactions, the emotional stress reactions, is to work with their imagery. So all emotions are based around imagery, psychological imagery. This is how the mind organizes um, emotional energy into particular emotions such as anger, irritation, stress, fear, depression, and so on. So that imagery is really what determines the emotion. It's what makes the emotion happen. Well, when we're meditating on our emotions, we can start to investigate that imagery, and then we can help that imagery change, because when the imagery changes, the emotion changes. And this is a primary natural psychological mechanism that the mind uses to process emotion. Generally, when an emotion is activated, there is strong emotional imagery, and then over a short period of time, typically, that emotional imagery diminishes in size, becomes uh, much uh, less intense in its imagery, and that makes the emotion less intense also. So this is how the mind processes emotions. So they start off very big, very vivid in color and detail, very close, and then over time those uh, the imagery changes its structure, it changes, becomes further away, smaller, more faded, less intense color and detail, and so on. So that's a natural process, that's how the mind is able to process emotions, by changing the imagery of the emotion. So when the emotion doesn't resolve itself, it's because that imagery gets stuck. So our job during our meditation on the stress is to see what that imagery is that's stuck. And classically, the imagery of stress can be described as having too many thoughts, too many objects, uh, in too small a space. So there's a tremendous sense of chaos, of, uh, of a clustering of reactive thoughts in a very small space. And that creates the feeling 
of stress, being overwhelmed. In fact, that term, feeling overwhelmed, is very interesting because it tells us something about the position of the stress emotion. It tells us that it's very large and that it's above us. It's high in, a, in a high position in our psychological field of vision, how we see it internally. So that it has to be big, it has to be formed of a, a chaotic uh, assembly of uh, thought objects in a small space in order to create stress. Um, if you see that imagery, you can start to work with it. Once you become conscious of it, you can start to change that imagery. The imagery is formed out of habit, just like the emotion. It's purely habit, meaning that it's operating out of awareness. But when we bring it into awareness, that always restores an element of choice. We can begin to retrain that uh, imagery and help the emotion heal. So a classic thing that uh, you will learn to do during our uh, Skype therapy sessions together is learning how to work with this imagery, the imagery of stress. And a classic thing that we start with straight away is learning to move those thoughts, the thoughts that feed the stress emotion. So classically what you will do is you will see those thoughts, those reactive stress based thoughts and then you move them and put them further away and also move them to a lower level, put them on the floor. So you're changing the imagery. When you create more space in that way around the thoughts, you will find that the thoughts become less stressful. Um, an analogy we often use here is to imagine the thoughts being like uh, bees or mosquitoes or flies. If there's a lot of them very close to you, then that causes a lot of uh, distress. But if you move those bees or flies further away, put them in a field, there's no stress, even though the, it's the same bees or flies. So technically, it's not the thoughts that cause stress, it's the lack of space around those thoughts that causes the stress. So that lack of space, that's part of the imagery of how we see those thoughts. If they're too close, they will be intense and they will exert uh, a lot of emotional um, effect on you. But if they're far away, they will have much less emotional power to them. So we learn to move our thoughts. And this can be immensely effective. Certainly something you can try yourself. So that's one example of how to work with stress uh, during our meditation. Meditation is not designed to create an alternate reality to stress. Meditation is not trying to create an, an altered state of consciousness that's not stressful. No, meditation is for the purpose of exploring how your mind creates stress so you can change that. It, meditation is a process of investigating the mind. Mindful, mindfulness meditation is about investigating how the mind creates emotional suffering and then exploring how to resolve that emotional suffering. Mindfulness meditation 
uh, was developed by the Buddha. The Buddha's primary interest was in the resolution of suffering because he saw that that is what stops us or keeps us from expressing our true self, our natural nature, which is very positive and uh, very joyful and free from suffering uh, in its natural state. We simply get um, distracted from our natural state of being by becoming identified with our stress reactions, these blind habitual reactions. So if we want to restore happiness in our life, the best way to do that is to look at those things that are keeping you away from being happy, that are, that are um, inhibiting that natural expression of happiness, which is your natural state of being. So this is why we use meditation to explore what is stopping me from being happy. What is causing this suffering? That's not a natural state. So I'm not going to blindly accept that. I want to see how that works. And I want to start changing that blind habit because that's all it is. Stress is the result of habit. In fact, anxiety and depression also are the result of blind habitual reactions. Emotional suffering is the result of blind habitual reactions that we simply don't see. So our job in, in mindfulness training is to awaken to the cause of our suffering. And that goes beyond simple stress and irritation and anger to look at depression, anxiety, and emotional trauma as well, as in PTSD. We will look to see how does this work? How do I create my emotional suffering? What are those subjective processes at work? And how can I help them change? So this is a brief introduction to mindfulness therapy for the management of stress. If you'd like to learn more and you'd like to schedule some Skype therapy sessions with me, then simply uh, go to the contact page and send me an email. Ask any questions you may have um, and let's schedule some Skype therapy sessions so you can learn how to manage your stress using mindfulness. The approach is very effective. Most people see dramatic uh, changes and improvements within a matter of weeks once you start really getting on top of your blind habitual reactions that are the real cause of your stress. So please contact me if this interests you and let's schedule some Skype therapy sessions. Thank you.